Good morning. This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. For the word says, I was glad when it said unto me, let us go to the house. I do want to give a special introduction right now to our preacher for the hour, none other than Minister Donna Singletary. Minister Donna Singletary is no stranger to this church. She's a member. She has matriculated through seminary, graduated last year, and she's going to share the word. Minister Donna is a mother, a, a wonderful wife, and a dedicated disciple of Jesus Christ. She is now a part of the Salvation Army ministry uh, as a counselor, but also as an advocate for justice. And so uh, after the Samaritan selection, you will hear the word today from Minister Donald Singletary. Now, one other thing I would say to you about her, and if you don't know, that she is our floor director. So ever since we've been broadcasting live on YouTube and Facebook, Minister Donald's been right here at the church kind of directing, giving us when to stand, when to speak, and all those kinds of things. So we are indeed grateful for her many, many gifts. And so today, uh, God will be blessed, and you will receive a word from Almighty God, from Minister Donna Singletary. We're grateful for God speaking in and through her. Because I've been so faithful, not because I've been so good. You've always been there for me to provide my every need. You were there when I was lonely, you were there in all my pain. Guiding my footsteps, shelter from the rain. And it was you who made my life complete. You are to me my everything, and that is why I see. Jesus, I love you because you care. I couldn't imagine if you weren't there. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you because because you care. You are the joy of my 
Jesus, we do love you. Let us pray. Lord, because of who you are in our lives, we, we thank you. We thank you for being you all by yourself. We thank you for your continuance of love in our lives. And now, Lord, for this preaching hour, we ask that you magnify your voice over my voice. We ask that you give us a fresh word by the power of your Holy Spirit and renew our faith in you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture this morning is coming from the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 through 20, the NRSV translation. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. For this preaching time, our sermon title is, Are You Listening to See in Order to Be? Virtual family, what is happening when we look all throughout social media, whether it's in the media blogs, local news, national news, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and the list goes on? We see people annihilated in our streets, berate each other in business meetings, cast each other out through a vote on whether her and other little girls' lives matter, disparage his character because of how he dresses and speaks, eject her or him because she or he speaks truth to power. Church, is anyone listening? Can anyone see? Is anyone listening and seeing reality shows where men and women are cussing each other out and throwing blows? Is anyone listening? Can anyone see? Is anyone listening? Can anyone see? Is anyone listening and can anyone see? I think the R&B group, the Black Eyed Peas, said it best in their song. Where is the love? People killing, people dying. Children hurting, I hear them crying. Can you practice what you're preaching? Would you turn the other cheek again? Mama, 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 tell us what the world is going on. Can't we all just get along? Father, 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 help us. Send us some guidance from above. Because people got me, got me questioning, where is the love? Friends, I want to be honest with you this morning. 
And I want to know, is anyone listening? Can anyone see? Let's talk a few moments this morning on this thesis. When we read our scripture found in previous chapters found in the book of Matthew, Jesus has been walking and talking and teaching and fellowshipping and breaking bread with his brothers, or shall I say bros. Fellas, you know how it is to get with your boys. And ladies, need not think I've forgotten about you. You know how we do when we get together and have a girl's day or night. Well, you see, Jesus is what I like to say, you know, chilling with the fellas, taking real time, listening to them and others. Jesus was in the midst of the people, being moved by compassion and love, walking and welcoming others along the way, talking teaching, feeding, and healing those who were hungry in, and in need. While they were walking around the region, they were met by the Pharisees and the Sadducees who questioned and tested Jesus. Oh, you know the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They were the religious elite, keepers and controllers of the religious laws. Essentially, they knew the religious laws, and they didn't particularly like Jesus being with the people. They didn't like him being with the people, being moved by compassion, humility, love, and service. You know, church family, the Pharisees and the Sadducees knew all well how to cross the T's and dot the I's. And knowing about these T's and these eyes, they were questioning Jesus of his personhood and God-given ministry. Jesus already knowing that they were hypocrites to their own teachings and laws, he warns the disciples about these naysayers. Now, as they left one region and they entered into another called Caesarea Philippi, Jesus asked the disciples, who do people say who the Son of Man is? Right at the entrance of this region, Jesus is asking, what's the word on the street? The disciples answer saying, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. The scripture doesn't tell us this, however, I can imagine Jesus may have been checking their listening abilities to see who and what they were listening to. Then Jesus seems to go in a little more intimately, and he asked the disciples, but who do you say that I am? Now, the first word in this question is but, translated from the original Greek word day which means removal, separation, or negation. Jesus had just asked them about who do the people say I am, and then he turns around and starts his next question with the word but. In essence, this removes or negates what others are saying of who the Son of Man is to who the disciples are saying he is to themselves. Now remember, the Sadducees and the Pharisees were already questioning and trying to test him, and Jesus warned them about the naysayers. You see, the naysayers always want to have control instead of compassion, have an accusatory spirit instead of a confession, cause decisiveness instead of determination, and dissension instead of harmony. Thus, Jesus is being deeply concerned about who they say he is. In verses 16, Simon Peter speaks up and announces and says, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. This announcement Peter gives also gives us our first nugget of truth which is, 
having a relationship with Jesus far outweighs what others have to say. In other words, I'm not going to call him what others happen to say or what they want me to say or what they want me to write or how I'm supposed to say it. I'm going to call him as I know him. And when you have a relationship with Jesus, conversations may go a little something like this. Jesus, you are my shepherd. I shall not want. Jesus, you are the light of my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Jesus, you are my rock in a weary land. Jesus, you are my way maker, my burden barrier, my peace. Jesus, you are my rock. Jesus, you are my lily in the valley. Jesus, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Go ahead and give Jesus some praise right where you are this morning. Go ahead and type in the chat, hallelujah. Because if you have people around you where you are this morning, tell them the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. And if you're alone, that's all right, because you are not lonely. Jesus is right there with you. Tell him thank you. Jesus is deeply concerned about us and wants us to know intimately who he is. And I'm sure someone may be asking, how do I get to know Jesus like that? Listen, that's a great question because asking means the Holy Spirit is oppressing upon your heart and your conscience right now. As Revelation 3 verses 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone should hear my voice and open the door, then I will come into him and I will dine with him and he with me. Jesus is right there with you, inviting you to come read and learn all about him in your Bible. Meditate upon his words, your daily bread. Have some quiet time where it's just you and him. And he says, I'll teach you to listen so that you can hear and know my voice. And thus Simon Peter knew who Jesus was. Let's go a little further in our text in verse 17. Jesus answers Peter by saying, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. This sentence alone causes my very being to move and dance. Jesus is essentially saying, you are my brother and blessed because you know me intimately. Your reliance of who I am isn't upon what others are saying. Friends, I'm here to tell you Jesus wants you to get to know him for yourself. It is a blessing to know who Jesus is. As we are getting to know Jesus, he teaches us not just to hear, however, to listen. Jesus calls Simon Peter, son of Jonah, blessed. And then in our next verse, Jesus changes Peter's name, or shall we say Simon. Now, Simon, son of Jonah, y'all, was described by scholars as a, a fisherman, sometimes fickle, you know fickle. You know, sometimes he's hot, sometimes he's not. You know, unpredictable, temperamental, yeah. And you know, Simon, Simon lived by what I call the wish factor. Oh no, he wasn't singing from the R&B group. Rolls Royce, 
I'm wishing on a star to follow where you are. Oh, no, 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 no. Simon was like the Denzel Washington character's name, John Creasy, in the movie Man on Fire, when he says, I wish you had more time. Let's just say Simon was ready to settle and sunset some things. Oh, yeah, I encourage you to read on your own time. Because, see, Simon, a few chapters back, had cut off a man's ear with his sword in an attempt to keep Jesus from being arrested. And Jesus had to put the man's ear back on, y'all. You all read about it in this story. Take the time to read. It's so much better than any reality show that's out here. Listen, though. Jesus changes his name from Simon Peter because he spent some time listening and walking and talking and teaching with him. Jesus got to know who he was and saw he had potential that others couldn't see, which is our second nugget of truth this morning. When we have a relationship with Jesus, our identity and our relationship and potential in Jesus is through his death and resurrection of forgiveness. And we are redeemed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Our relationship with Jesus causes us to be especially attentive. And listening how Jesus listens and seeing as Jesus sees potential in others through their service and mission. As disciples of Jesus, we are listening to our brothers and sisters of potential with compassion and love while praying, while marching, while organizing through service and justice, knowing their humanity, their names, and their lives matter. And we say her name, Breonna Taylor, her life mattered. We say his name, George Floyd, his life mattered. We say her name, Charlena Lies, as her life mattered. We say his name, Ahmaud Arbery, his life mattered. We say her name, Sandra Bland, and her life mattered. And so many more. We say their names. We say their names. We say their names. Jesus cares and is concerned, listening and seeing and speaking up. Jesus' humility and being moved by compassion energized him into the community to be of service to those in need. Church family, we look around And it doesn't take much to see how much turmoil and chaos is circling, seems to be the earth. But Jesus is in our midst, and he's bringing about life, new life, and hope and justice. There's some newness in our atmosphere. And Jesus is inviting all of us and our gifts and our talents and our participation. That's good news, because we don't have to look far among us of who we were and are and will be as mission of compassion and love is in our hearts. Ah, rest in power and peace, John Lewis, one of our champions as a civil rights activist for justice. He paved the way for us. He says, when you see something that isn't right, not fair, not just, you have to speak up. You have to say something. 
You have to do something. Mr. Lewis, we, we thank you for your valuable contributions to our society. And I think, Mr. Lewis, you would be happy to see and hear that our Generation Zs, which is our youth, have been inspired behind you speaking up. Oh, hey, ah, we see you, Generation Z, doing something, speaking up, creating your own table, and inviting others to be a part. Our youth are rising up and speaking up. Oh, we see you actors, Asante Black and Ethan Harris and Reed Shannon, using your platform on the Speak Up series. These individuals of Generation Z are doing what Marianne Williamson says in her book, A Return to Love, using what you do as ministry. She says, no matter what we do, we can make it our ministry. No matter what form our job or activity takes, the content is the same as everyone else. We are here to minister to human hearts. Ah, yes, Generation Z is definitely listening and paving the way. And they are also paying attention to the needs of the community and having some very, very fruitful conversations about humanity. They know and see they're a part of the larger narrative, or shall I say, the bigger picture. And Jesus, also knowing the bigger picture, he blesses Simon and changes his name to Peter. He tells Peter, on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Peter's name in the original Greek language is pronounced Petros, which means rock. Jesus is using Peter as the very rock or foundation to move his ministry through. And he says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Jesus not only calls Peter blessed, he's given him some keys too. Church family, this, this wasn't any keys to a vehicle or to a house. These keys had bonding power, which is a metaphor in the form of tying up and loosing, which is a form of liberation. And this notion of binding and loosing is the very speech coming directly from our mouths. In essence, what Jesus is giving Peter is the power and authority of his words, Jesus' words, of life coming from Peter's mouth. And these words are backed up by heaven. So, what is this telling us? I'm glad you asked. Our words, my dear friends, have power. And when we spend time with Jesus, he causes us to listen to how he thinks and how he speaks. Ah, that's some good news right there. Our last nugget of truth for us this morning is Jesus gives us the power and authority to speak liberation. As Isaiah says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim the liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners. We use Jesus's power, his power, not to control others. However, we use it to listen and see with compassion. Therefore, we bind up 
disintegrating words in our speech and we loose encouragement instead. We, we bind up delusions and loose integrity instead. Uh, we bind up those who take a vote on whether our lives matter or not and loose knowing Jesus counts you in and not out. We start to not just hear the cries, frustrations, and oppressions of our brothers and sisters. However, we listen, we see them, and we be of service. Dr. Martin Luther King stated, everybody can be great because anybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and verb agree to serve. You only need a heart full of grace, a soul generated by love. And guess what, church family? We're not new to this. We're not new to living our lives of service. We've done this for centuries. Just look at our ancestors and our great-grandparents and our grandparents and our mothers and fathers and aunts and uncles and siblings and friends and neighbors. We're of service to one another. Are we preparing meals for anyone in need? That's service. Are we assisting our children with their education? That's service. Are we speaking up and voting for better education for all children? That's service. Are we speaking up and voting for equity in health care and affordable housing and living wages and prison reform? That's service. Are we assisting those who are homeless and living in tents? That's service. Are we checking in on each other to see how everyone is doing during this pandemic? That's service. Oh, and the list goes on and on and on. And guess what? God has equipped you and me with gifts and talents for us to give back to society. Just pray to Jesus and ask, and I assure you, he will position your heart full of service. Church family, we are not perfect people. We make mistakes. Guess what, though? The gift is that we can go to the Lord and ask for forgiveness. And he's always, always ready to give us forgiveness. And guess what? We're constantly learning. Poet, writer, activist, Sonia Sanchez says, I cannot tell the truth about anything unless I confess being a student, growing, learning something new every day. The more I learn, the clearer my view of the world becomes. Family, friends, let's keep learning together. Learning with courage, compassion, and love. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves this entire world. And there's nothing, nothing, nothing that can separate you from his love. My friends, this pandemic has us in a different mindset these days. There's a lot of movement in the atmosphere. There's a lot of tearing down and breaking up. However, there's a lot of planting. And during these times, I like to meditate. Meditate and meditate of who Jesus is as a reassurance that he is our glorious, sacrificial lamb. He died for us so that we could have forgiveness 
and live in eternity. He is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Please be invited to listen to this song. And may the power of the Holy Spirit minister to your hearts. Glory to the Lamb. Glory, glory to the Lamb. Glory, glory, glory to the Lamb. Glory, glory to the Lamb. You know why? Cause he is Alpha. He's Omega. Oh, forever is he. And he will reign forever. And we sing glory, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Lamb, yeah, glory, glory to the Lamb, we sing glory to the Lamb, for you are Alpha, Omega, oh, forever, forever is He. We'll wait forever and we sing holy, holy is he for you are alpha, he's omega forever. Holy, holy is He. desirous of a church home, go ahead and tap right in into the chat box. Dr. Carol and, and Pastor Lanson, they're there waiting for you. 
email me and I will email you back and let you know how to become a virtual member of this church. Do know that God loves you, I love you, and we look forward to worshiping with you on next week. Until then, have a glorious day in the Lord. God bless you, God keep you, we love you. Have a good day.